The pressure is on yet again for the LA Kings after failing in the first round of the playoffs yet again. We just went through a very interesting offseason, of course, that saw us move on from Drew Doughty, re-sign Carl Grundstrom, pick up some free agent prospects, have an interesting draft, and it's not done yet because before we begin the regular season, something else has to be done. And I left it up to you guys with the option of a poll in the description of the last video, knowing that some defensemen had to be moved. And really, it did come down to Clegg, Zekoff, Bjorn Fott, and Sanderson. Anisimov, obviously, with that potential, former fourth overall pick, he's going nowhere. But out of the other four, two, in theory, have to go. Again, really only one has to go, but if we pair at least two of these guys together, the thought is we can bring in a top four you know, defenseman that's better than both of them to replace the two that are outgoing. Whether or not Mo Marsh is a part of that is the question. And again, for me, it was, okay, let's make him a part of that because he really doesn't fit on that third line at all. But there was some support to keep him. So I'm going to try to get a deal done if I can without using Mo Marsh. And we'll give him a chance, even though he's not a good fit on that third pairing. Because obviously right now you look and it's like, okay, you know, no real effect on the line chemistry. So maybe he's still usable. We'll see if indeed that is the case. For now, though, let's get down to the trade, setting up this team, and of course we'll begin the regular season sim. I have the goals for the season uh, figured out after looking at the comments, of course, the most liked comments, and just the comments in general, because obviously, you know, if I repeat, you know, if I repeatedly see the same comments about, hey, have it be this, then obviously we're going to pick that. So let's see what we can do here, as you may have expected. In terms of the two that we are going to be looking to trade, it is going to be Sanderson and Zekoff. Now, in terms of the defensemen that we're going to look to pick up, I mean, in terms of a top four option that was out there that was on a team's trade block, Vince Dunn seems like the best option. Now, it, it's going to be a little bit cheap if I sit here and uh, say, like, oh, 83 or 85 overall and up. I mean, it would kind of let me know, but... I mean, pretty much, again, we know Vince Dunn's a top four defenseman. In terms of picking up a top two defenseman, uh, there are 15 top two defensemen in this league right now. Most of these trade values are accurate, so yeah, that's not going to happen unless we give up one of the members of our top line. So we're going to be looking at a top four defenseman. In terms of picking up a legitimate top two, it's not happening. The only way that was happening is if we were willing to pay Ivan Provorov nearly 12 million bucks, which... Winnipeg actually got a pretty good deal getting him on 11 and a half. But obviously it's like, okay, is Provorov worth it? I mean, I see the assessment. Sack, sack, Granado? What the hell is that? <laughs> uh, regardless, uh, as it turns out, and yes, I know this is Makar's in the AHL. i got to remember it's the preseason. Turns out Provorov might have been worth it. Oof. That would have been a lot of money to give up, and we wouldn't have been able to keep Carl Grundstrom, but if you want to talk about a potential regret of mine, it might be having not signed Ivan Provorov when we had the chance, because that could be rough. However, there is a defenseman I am interested in, and it is going to be Vince Dunn. I want to see, first and foremost, what the Blues, ideally, uh, would look to get back for him. I'm not against, of course, you know, editing the trade a little bit, but I am intrigued to see what they would prefer to get for one Vince Dunn. If I'm not mistaken, he was on an expiring deal. He is no extension signed, so that would be a factor coming up as we get a look at the deals. So they want a first, a second, and Rafalski. Again, if I wanted to cheese it, we could do that because Rafalski, he's not really worth anything. They're certainly not getting Carter Hart. They're not getting Alex Iafalo, and they're not getting Van Kaddish and Pau. So, it's interesting that they want Rafalski that trade would be me kind of cheesing the system a little bit. That's not to say we haven't cheesed the system a little bit, right? We are, we obviously have. I mean, in certain series, of course, uh, even in this series, it's been like, oh, we're way too low on cap space. Let me go out and uh, sign Sean Corrali to that much money, which, you know, who's to say? I'd sign Sean Corrali to that much money. If you don't agree, you don't watch the Bruins enough. Then again, none of us watch enough hockey right now because it's not a thing. That said... I'm not against throwing Rafalski into this deal, but he's not going to be like the main value player behind it. But it's interesting that they want draft picks. Very interesting that they want draft picks. They're not interested in Sanderson 
or Zekoff. At least we have confirmation on how good those two are. And then when it comes to our draft picks, I mean, obviously the pick I'd most likely be willing to move is our own, putting stock in what our team is going to do this year. We also have Washington's uh, and Ottawa's. So looking here, what did they want? Did they do the second round next year? Okay. So, hmm. <sighs> I don't necessarily have to add Sanderson or Zekoff to that. I want to see what I could get just moving them through the uh, trade finder. And then I might still work out a deal with Dunn, except I might give them a little bit more uh, just to really make it worth their while. Because again, Rafalski's terrible and he's not going to make it. So Sanderson, we could get Billy Sariarvi in a third. Eh, I mean, I don't really know how, I don't really know how good Sariarvi is. Is he a third pairing guy? He's a depth defenseman. I mean, he doesn't really fit in with the team at all. That's the problem, right? I mean, in terms of getting somebody, we need you to fit in on the team. He had 10 points in 78 games last year. He had been in the AHL with Arizona and the Tucson Roadrunners. Yeah, I'm going to say no to that. I feel like I can do a little bit better for Sanderson than a, than a third-round pick. I might be wrong, but let's see what else was there really quickly, hopefully. Also, we have confirmation that Mercier is top four, but is looking closer to being NHL ready. So that's not too bad for a 10th overall pick. Daniel Mercier will be making the team hopefully sooner rather than later. Spa check in a third. Hill, don't know how good he is. Mangiapani in a third. Yanmark or Albrecht. So Hill and then Albrecht on Toronto have to be the most interesting two that we could possibly get. Let's take a look at Hill on Dallas. He's 21, other forward, former first round pick out of Denmark, Corey Hill, six foot three. And then what about the dude Albrecht in Toronto? I'd prefer to send Sanderson out to Toronto just because again, you know, Eastern Conference team. But what about Albrecht here? 71, 20 years old, other forward, another former first round pick. Also a bit of a bigger body at 6'3", 206, the German. So he has three years left, and again, he's 20. And then we go back to Dallas, and Hill, whose value is legit, is 21. Two years left. That's kind of the interesting call, right? Because we know for a fact what Hill's value is. We don't know what Albrecht's is. So it's kind of concerning because you can pretty much confirm that Hill's a medium top six, but there's a chance Albrecht could be a, uh, <laughs> a top nine, which would be a bit of a disaster. But he does have that extra year of contract control. So I'm looking at the scouting here. I mean, you know, some of the stats are up there. I highly doubt he actually has five-star shooting. I think I want to risk it with Albrecht here. I mean, again, we don't know for sure how good he is, but I'm willing to give it a chance. We get a forward prospect in for Sanderson, and this way, too, we can you know, get Vince done for draft picks. Again, I'm going to throw in an extra draft pick. We'll use Rafalski to make it worth their while. I don't want Rafalski's value to be kind of the big factor there, but I think we're going to be trying to send Sanderson out to Toronto Picking up a forward prospect as a result, which can't hurt. I do want to safety net this really quickly, though. A second rounder might be too much, but I'm still going to go for it. So let's see. Sanderson for Albrecht in a second. Rejected, which is good news. That means, obviously, their values have to be close. What about a third rounder? Still rejected. Sweeten it just a touch. That we can do because I have fifth round picks and sixth round picks that I need to move. So Sanderson, a fifth and a sixth for Albrecht and a third. Will that go through? Yes, it will. So let's vote it on by you guys. Jake Sanderson off the team. We bring in a forward prospect from Toronto. And we will continue to see how this team pans out. Now, again, obviously players are going to be upset about me trading away. Uh, someone like Jake Sanderson, but it is what it is. They'll get over it. Zikoff is also going to be on the way out what is an option for him hill from dallas that works thomas tatar and a third mangiapani and yanmark so 
I think we're going to pick up this dude from Dallas as well. I mean, best of both worlds. We move two roster defensemen. We're going to be bringing in two forward prospects from other teams and also bringing in Vince Dunn to replace the defenseman that we had to move on from. Same thing here. I'm going to safety net this a little bit just to make sure we're not getting screwed on value. Will this go through? Not quite, which again is a good thing. We know Hill's value is legit. Third rounder, will that go through? Still no, just a bit low. So again, we'll go back and try to tack on some extra picks. I am going to have to move a third. I still have to move a fifth as it is. And we have to move a crap ton of sevenths. So we might as well just throw these sevenths into the deal. So Zikoff, a fifth and three sevenths for Hill and a third. Again, it sucks to move on from Zikoff, but... Uh, the tribe has spoken. Clegg, Bjorn Fott uh, are ahead in the team depth chart. So will this go through? Yes, it will. Thank you very much, Dallas. Corey Hill, welcome to Los Angeles. And that leaves us with one move left to make, and that is the acquisition of Vince Dunn from the St. Louis Blues. And from there, our team will be looking okay. Again, Mo Marsh <clears throat> is going to stay. For the moment, hopefully that's a move we don't regret. So again, uh-oh. You did not just remove him from the block. You did not. Why would you remove him from the block? Nothing else happened. All right, I'm totally using Rafalski now. I'm going to send the same deal that I would have sent before. This is taking forever to load, by the way. There we go. Hart and Van Kaddish and no Anderson. No, 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 no. There's no reason for St. Louis to have adjusted the block. Yes, now I did make a trade with Dallas, but there's no way same day that they would have taken Vince Dunn off the block. That's outrageous. So I am absolutely uh, using Rafalski now to get a deal done. That is outrageous. And I guess you could have argued, hey, trade for Dunn first, but yeah, no, that's, that's not going to happen like that game. I don't think so. So this deal is still going to happen. I am for damn sure going to make sure of it now. Yeah, no, we are not getting uh, screwed out of the chance here as we don't have a full report on all of our guys. But again, we're still looking pretty good. So I would have given up our first round pick anyway. How close is this? Actually, they wanted the second next year as well. That I'm willing to give up on. Will this go through? No. So I'm going to have to add in more anyway. Son of a bitch. You gotta be kidding me. What about our second round pick this year as well? Just a bit low. I'm using Rafalski to get this done. Like, there's there's no doubt about it. I have to move a third round pick now anyway. Uh, I'm gonna bank on Tampa being a good team. As per usual, will that go through? Yes, it will. Vince Dunn, welcome to Los Angeles. Again, we kind of cheese Rafalski's value because the game kind of cheesed me in terms of him being taken off the block moments after a trade was done. So, looking forward, ha, huh, Vince Dunn. We have two first-round picks. We don't have a single one of our own. We have a second-round pick this year from Ottawa. We're going to have to move a third as well, eventually. And again, no second-round pick next year as it stands. But for now, uh, the movement, I think, for this team is just about done. We are down to contender status at the moment, which doesn't really surprise me. Again, it will be Hart and Makaniemi at the NHL level. Defense is now done. Clegg, Bjorn Fott, Anisimov. I don't know if I want to try Phillips with Marsh because ultimately Mo Marsh looks to be a defensive D-man. I don't know if we want to pair two defensive D-men together because Phillips... Uh, Phillips could actually be a two-way. You know, we might give them a shot together. We might. Because there are still other players uh, that I'm interested in. Like Patrick, Dursey, uh, Spence as well could be given an opportunity. Um, I need to see... What I want to do here, because that's one, two, three, four, five, six. We might have to bump up Travis Hamannick or sign another depth defenseman. And then our forwards, we have 10, 11, 12, 13 with Corrali. And then Albrecht will be sent down. So let's get a look at the team. And I might have to make a old jump cut here to sort some things out. We shall see. But again, Sean Corrali will be out. Did I send down too many forwards? Where is, uh, did it send down Anze? Why would it have sent down Kopitar? Where's Anze? What the hell? Anze? Kopitar? Where's Anze? Kop Kopitar? What? What? Am I? Okay, Kopitar is there. What the hell? Who, who's missing? 
Who's missing then? Because somebody's missing and I don't know who it is. I'm so confused right now. Who the hell is missing that was going to be on the team? Leeson, Shaffer, Gulen, or did I not find a fourth? Am I losing my mind and I didn't find a fourth line option? I swear we're missing somebody or not. What the hell? Am I losing my mind? I think I'm losing my mind. Is it? Oh, it's got to be playing one of our forwards on defense. Yep, there's Kopitar. So it didn't go best lines even though I told it to go best lines. That's what happened. Fair enough. Thanks for the mini heart attack game. So again, these lines are pretty much going to uh, shape up like this. And then defensively, it's now going to be Dunn and Clegg, who work pretty well together. Anisimov and Bjornfot. We might put... I kind of want to put Anisimov with Dunn and see what happens there. We'll see, because obviously we want to boost up Anisimov. But the good thing is Phillips and Marsh can at least work relatively well together. So I think we're going to give those two a chance. Again, kind of like what we've seen in the Chicago series, the third pairing doesn't matter as much. Like, the rest of the team should be good enough to boost them up. But quickly to take a look here now in the AHL, I just want to make sure that we have enough uh, players on roster. Of course, we signed Dustin Tokarski. Uh, Suter's there as well as just like a random AHL signing. But defensively, Tommy Allen's going to get the opportunity, or is there. So I am going to need an NHL, uh, an NHL level depth defenseman. Uh, not sure who we're going to sign because I don't want it to be Hamannick, but that way Hamannick is the healthy scratch. Allen will probably play. Uh, we could use a third AHL goalie as well. And then forward wise, I think we were good if I'm not mistaken. Hill, Nash, and Nash. Both of these Nashes are ours, are they not? Yes, they are. Justice and Riley. Okay, so in terms of uh, AHL forwards, we're good to go. Of course, Anders Lee looking like he's going to be on this team, but I'm excited to see what happens to the likes of Albrecht. Although I am a bit concerned that Corey Hill is not put into the lineup right out of the gates. That's a bit concerning. But we'll see what happens. Now, again, we're at 53 out of 50 contracts because of the uh, the exempt deals, which is pretty nice. But let's see who we can sign here. Again, I don't want to risk it with one of those dudes, so we're going to go for another veteran. I'm going to go for Mr. Francis, Francois, Franco, Francus, Francis. I've heard 17 different pronunciations, and once it seemed like everyone was decided on Francis, it became Francois. So I don't know. But regardless... Uh, we're going to need one more defenseman here, preferably NHL depth level. And the answer for that is either Joey Keane or Kale Flurry. So I can either remind Rangers fans of what they're missing, because people, you know, Rangers fans didn't want you know the team to give up Joey Keane, or I can make Habs fans very happy and get Kale Flurry. And you know, it's been a long time since I've used Kale Flurry in a series. I think I'm going to pick up Kale Flurry for our depth option this season. So these two hopefully will accept, and then again, we'll set up the team and get into simming a little bit. We'll also go over our, our goals for the season. So Francis has signed. What about Kale Flurry? Come on, Kale, come on down. There we go. Sweet. So I will see you guys in a moment once this team is fully established. All right, after taking a look over a couple of things, getting all the lines set up, we are ready to begin this season sim. And of course, the lines, as you would expect, you know, set up right now, that sentence doesn't make sense. But you know what? I'm going to run with it because we're not going to restart this, and I'm not perfect. I don't try to be. The top line is set up as you would expect, as are most of the lines. Genther, Turcotte, Savoy, Grundstrom, Kapari, Van Kattishan, Iafalo, Anderson, Dolan, Madden, Wagner, Kopitar, and Luff. Now a plus five, switched on a, uh, to a grinder. Of course, that's not his typical role. We know he's not overly physical, but for the sake of the plus five, it seemed to make sense. And again, obviously, Anze Kopitar... You know, not exactly a star player for us anymore. He did well last year, but we have to play him in that reduced role. Obviously, you know, Rick Van Kattishen stepping up, replacing him in the higher lines, but our captain is still going to be a crucial part of the penalty kill, four on four lines and everything. Defensively, I have gone with Clegg Dunn. It's going to be Bjorn Fott and Anisimov on the second pairing, Marsh with Marcus Phillips. So, We'll see what happens with that third pairing. I'm a little bit concerned, if i got to be honest. Marcus Phillips, though, finally gets his NHL debut. Of course, the power play lines, though, should be outstanding. 
It's our top nine with one defenseman. That's going to be Bjornfot, who's our only OFD. We'll see if that continues to be the case. If he struggles, Dunn can get a shot. Kill Clegg can get a shot if need be. Of course, goaltending wise, we know it's Carter Hart and Makaniemi, and we'll see what happens with Carter Hart. A lot of pressure on his shoulders after a disappointing playoff run. And then down in the AHL, I've sorted it by potential, or at least what I know of these potentials. I want to see what Albrecht brings to the team. We know Yuha Curry's looking pretty good as well, and Corey Hill, that new top line. So we're going to see how this one plays out, but established guys like Shafagulin, Leeson, Reimsha, Dudas, Fogamo down in the bottom six. And then defensively, We'll see how it plays out. I mean, you know, it's it's decent. We don't know how good Allen is at this point, but he's 21, and it's about time that we find out. And then goalie-wise, Twaminen and Fransus, the goaltenders there. So obviously, you know, the NHL vets, Wagner, Lee, Perhorkin, Hamannick, Riley Nash, those are the guys to step into the lineup in case of injury. So I'm excited to see what this team can do. I mean, we're still listed as contenders as opposed to champions like we were when we still had the extra top four defensemen. But again, with the limitations that we have on ourselves in this series, trying to make sure that, you know, we neutralize uh, players, you know, being upset about morale, we have it set up for this reason. We'll see how things go. Now, the goals for the season as decided on by you, and it is going to be a very uh, relevant goal to start things off. Uh, we need to have a winning record against the other California teams in San Jose and Anaheim. And obviously our first game of the season is against the Anaheim Ducks. So we'll see how that one plays out for us to really, you know, kick things off right out of the gates. Goal number two, much like last year, the top line, that big three, all need to be at least over a point a game, or at least a point a game or more. So we're looking for 82 points out of each of the members of that top line. And yet again, unsurprisingly, goal for the season, get out of the first round. For the love of God, can we please make it to the second round of the playoffs? So those are our three goals for the year. Again, we start things off against Anaheim. Not sure how much simming we will be doing, but I do want to get a look at the ratings as we have a 96 offense, 89 defense, and 89 in goaltending. So Anaheim also looking like a really competent team. We'll see how competent they ultimately are. Hopefully we can get a big win here out of the gates to kick things off with that first challenge of the season, and we lose in overtime. That is... That is unfortunate. So we are 0-1. Again, on overtime loss isn't going to matter. We are 0-1 against the Anaheim Ducks out of the gates. So not the way I wanted to start things off. Of course, there were other challenge suggestions uh, when it comes to like, oh, hey, uh, win a division title. But, you know, stuff like that we have done before. But, you know, win a division title uh, was one of the more common ones. Uh, you know, I think it was top five goalie shutouts. There was one that suggested uh, having every defenseman uh, have a positive plus minus. I think plus five was the minimum. Uh, but again, in terms of the most popular suggestions that were in the comments, that is what we went off of, as that is not going to help. So again, the terminology was point per game. That is obviously going to affect Dylan Genther's ability to hit 82 points. He could still be a point per game. And we are getting destroyed in the aftermath of losing Dylan Genther to injury. Wow. Anze Kopitar goes down to injury as well. Yikes. Yikes. Yeah, let me, please let me go to roster moves first. Wow. That's not good. Now, Genther's actually nearly back. So let's actually go edit lines here, and then Corrali can immediately replace Kopitar. How did Corrali do? He wasn't that bad. You know, worth playing him there instead of calling somebody up immediately. But that is not the ideal start to this season, I would say. So Corrali's going to be in on that fourth line. And again, this hasn't exactly been, you know, this team getting off to a flying start. Justice Nash goes down to a minor concussion. So 7-4-2, and two, fun fact, uh, still right in the hunt for the top of the division title, which isn't all that surprising early stages of course, again, we only had the one game against the Ducks. We have yet to play the Sharks this season. That will change mid-month. We'll actually sim to the day after that San Jose game and see what we're dealing with. 
Dylan Genther gets re-injured. So the risk we took by playing him before he was back to 100%. And now we're going to, you know, miss him for a little bit more time. That's, that's great. So in terms of who we're calling up, uh, <laughs> uh, let's go for Perhorkin. That way I don't have to edit the AHL lines as well. And we'll see what the vet can do on our top line. I mean, the top two of that line really should be able to carry the weight, I would uh, presume. Uh, we have an unfilled three-on-three -three line because, you know, fill all lines. Nope, just kidding. Not all the lines. We can't possibly have that work as expected. Take a little bit more time out of my life to fix that. Apparently, we have a minus three on that line. That's not great. Oof. Uh, what's the best way to get rid of that? Yikes. Can I do... Nope, that's that's not going to work. Uh, what is the best way to get... Why is there a minus three anyway? It's because of Anders Lee. He really doesn't fit in on that team. There we go. That's, that's better. But that's right, because Lee was in due to injury. That's why it was such a nightmare. It makes sense... I suppose. Justice Nash is back. We do need to get him back in the lineup in favor of one Anders Lee. Again, thank God his contract expires at the end of this season. That'll be seven million bucks off the books. Now, Nash is only a 60, but a confirmed a low elite at 21. He's worth playing for this season, but I'm not uh, not holding my breath that he's going to be a good player for us. Bulat Shafagulin goes down to injury. Man, the injury bug is biting hard right now. Uh, Drake Rimesha goes down to injury in Ontario. I did not change the injury settings uh, compared to what it had been. So that is pretty brutal. Anze's back. Genther is still not at 100%, so he will not uh, be in the lineup until he is good to go. Perhorkin will stay. Yeah, he's been fine on that top line. He'll stay where he is until uh, Genther is 100%, which he is. So... Rough start to this year for Dylan Genther. Again, could still hit a point per game mark, but in terms of having like a very impressive point total, it's not looking too good. He does have 15 points in nine games, though, so that's looking good. Turcotte's over the mark. Savoy is over the mark, as you would expect. So, so far, so good. Let's see what happens here. We've won three games in a row. We make it four with a win over Dallas. We beat Detroit as well. San Jose, as you would have seen, is at the top of the division right now, and we lose to them 4-3. to three. So Anaheim and San Jose giving us a little bit of trouble right now. We are 0-for-1 against both of them. As frustrating as that is, we will move ahead here. We have a home-at-home -home coming up against Edmonton. Apparently it's going to be a good year for rookies. We still have a fantastic record, though. Despite the losses to the two other California teams, uh, we get crushed by Edmonton on the road, and we lose to them at home as well. Play the other Alberta team in Calgary. That's a loss. Jesus, do not play Alberta. This is what we learned today. We lose to Colorado as well, so it was looking good. And then we lose five out of our next six games after a loss to the Sharks. Still 16-8-4 on the season, but only good for third in the division, the Pacific is going to be tough. San Jose, 22-5-0. and oh. Anaheim towards the bottom of the standings, yet we still lost to them. So clearly every game against the Ducks is going to matter. Let's take a look at the lines here really quickly, shall we? So again, Dylan Genther right now, 19 points in 18 games. Slow start for him upon return from injury. Uh, Alex Turcotte, 34 points in 28, looking really good. And Matthew Savoy also looking really good with the 34 points in 28 games. Grundstrom, 30 points. Great stuff from him. Kapari's been a bit slow offensively, which is disappointing. He was really good last year. Rasmus Kapari is struggling right now. Not great. Rick Van Kattish in 22 points in 28 games is fine. Of course, the argument could be made, does he belong on the third line for now? Do we give someone like follow a chance on a higher line? He has 25 points in 28 games. Anderson Dolan, 16 and 28, is not bad. Madden, 18 in 28. But, of course, that third line was so good for us last year. Fourth line, Austin Wagner has been brutal. Brutal this season defensively. Kopitar as well. 
and Matt Luff upon his return. That fourth line has been bad. You could argue, okay, someone's you know someone's got to take the brunt of the goals against, but it's clearly been that fourth line. So some concerns. Kapari been a bit quiet, and that fourth line is struggling right now. Uh, we can break it up. Matt Luff is a depth option, so we could take him out if need be. Uh, Kale Clegg, 10 points and a plus 15, working well alongside Vince Dunn. Second pairing, Bjorn fought. I mean, despite the power play time, really not killing it right now. So I think Clegg or Dunn should probably be given the chance on the power play. And Isimov hasn't been that bad. And then third pairing, Mo Marsh has been fine. Marcus Phillips, not that bad. Goaltending-wise, Carter Hart has been great. So much better from Carter Hart. Etu Makaniemi hasn't been it, though. So, looking here at what can be done, you could make the change. I think Kapari, though, has to play second line. He does, but Rick Van Kattishen could be dropped to the third line, but is that going to hurt? He's showing up as a legitimate 86 right now, so we might want to just see if the middle six can stabilize. Fourth line, we can drop Matt Luff if we need to. Power play-wise, we could give Clegg or Dunn the opportunity. Again, Anisimov is not an offensive defenseman. Uh, but one of the members of the top two could take Bjorn Fott's spot on the power play. And then it might be worth moving on from Etu Makaniemi already. Uh, we gave him the chance to see if he was kind of the guy that could step into the lineup and do well. And unfortunately, uh, that hasn't been it. So in terms of what would happen there, I mean, I don't think Tulminen's the guy. I mean, he's been phenomenal in the AHL, though. Uh, but I don't think he's the guy yet. Uh, Francois, Francois, whatever, uh, is still listed as an other goalie, so we might have to trade Makaniemi to bring in a more reliable backup. But all in all, I mean, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Albrecht confirmed 77 medium top six. Hill confirmed 73 medium top six. So the Albrecht uh, swap is at least looking pretty good. And then Yuha Curry uh, next season is going to be an NHLer, no doubt about it. So I do like kind of the uh, rebuilt depth that we have now for forwards after those trades. So, feeling pretty good. But yeah, let me know what you think about the potential changes that we could make to the lineup and to some of the players on the team in general. And in the next episode, we will continue on with this season and see if we can live up to not only the goals for the season, but really right now, it's all about the playoffs and can we actually find success. Time will tell. For now, thank you for watching. You know the deal. If you enjoyed the video, or hey, at least enjoyed having me as background noise, drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Check out everything in the description. It would be greatly appreciated. And of course, a shout out to my patrons over on Patreon. I love you all, and I will see each and every one of you right here next time, I hope at least, as we continue on with this run with the LA Kings.